Hi Varun. Hi. Welcome to Sudhi Audio's channel. Uh, you own perhaps India's, I mean one of the most popular, not just popular, I would say also busy and very well managed company called uh, Sound.com. As a rental company, it's known by event organizers and known at venues, etc. Right. Uh, we'll talk about the company and the technology you've kind of used in the mm -hmm. second part. Right. But for now, let's start off by introducing you as a person who got, I mean, who's raised the bar right. of uh, rental uh, business in, in India. Right. Could you please share with us about your childhood and how did you get interested in music and right. Through audio, live sound, etc. Yeah, you know, there's always a story for everybody. And my story is that my dad was into this racket. I say this, this, at that point in time, it was the racket. Okay. And uh, you can say now we get into space of being organized. Mm. So it's still an organized racket, but uh, there is a method in the madness. And because I saw that method in the madness is the reason why I started Sound.com. Okay. Because we all have passions. Everybody is passionate about what they do. But how do they put their passion to work is the most important thing. Meaning I can go on and on and talking about how things should be. Mm -hmm. But then putting that into perspective and working upon that and successfully executing it is the biggest challenge. So at the time I started, I realized that I had really nobody to look up to. There was no, there was no my guru or my hero. What age was this? When, how old were you? I, or? somehow it, there was no such thing as this age or it was as you grow up, you just realize that you are destined to do this. So it can be in your subconscious and then when an opportunity comes, then you take that opportunity and make something out of it. But I realized one thing that I am a classic example of also learning from other people's mistakes. Because we already, by the time I got to a stage where I realized I wanted to do it, there were around 8 to 9 notable companies and I knew that what good points to pick and what bad points to reject out of everybody and if I knew anything about audio it came from within but if I came to know something about running an outfit it came from everybody's testimonials and their current status in the market so at the time I got into the business I started with a Mackie 1604 mixer and two speakers that with uh, along with some subwoofers which was a rent which was a stock that I used to manufacture which I decided to start renting and the company previously was called Macon Audio that used to manufacture all speakers so what was your first show that you did on your own so my first show was very interesting because I drove I packed I loaded I wired and I played the music also okay. <laughs> And the rest is history. So you can say that it, it's, it has never been the destination, it's always been the journey. Mm -hmm. I have been that testimonial to that journey and it's been fantastic. I, mean, I don't think I carried a speak on my entire life, I don't think I worked today in my life. I think I just amplified everybody's talent mm -hmm. and that for me was the biggest thing. I knew I could not be a rock star and I knew that my life will be on the other end of the snake cable. So, if I could not rock like them, at least I could amplify them. And, like you know, a lot of people say that they are passionate about music and that's why they did this. And I think I was passionate about sound, meaning sound as a state of sound, as, as a science, as an organic science of physics. So, have you formally uh, been educated? In I, no, not Really, a lot of people, I, it, was, it was quite shocking that, you know, people had this opinion that I was educated, I went to the West and I learned and I, 
but quite frankly i am a diploma in electronic student okay. and uh, that did uh, communications and radio engineering as a as my majors and electronics even i i just was doing this because i said i had to get into the field mm. and there was no sound engineering course in that point of time and the diploma in st xavier's institute in my mind was the most popular it was very difficult to get in only 60 seats in the entire of mumbai right. and i did extremely well in the interview and i got it i wouldn't say i was ac- academically that kind of guy but i think i was very very motivated and i was i think my attitude got me places so i was not a topper but it's it was just an attitude that and then when i started really taking electronics seriously when i passed out in 1992 i started learning electroacoustics in a way that you know people could not fathom at that point of time right from what is a crossover meaning I mean, it's not something that you read in your book. Mm. Come on, you wind the inductor yourself with your own hand. You put the first order filter. Hear what it sounds like. Change it. Make it a second order filter. Hear it. What it sounds like. Okay. There, there were times like we. I did experiments with loudspeaker systems because I was fanatical about loudspeakers. And. it came to even capacitors blowing up such that even the capacitor oil falling on to my legs and burning me so you know it was a little it was that era and it was fascinating because the stuff i learned about loudspeakers i used to manufacture my own loudspeakers and obviously associated my own crossovers and stuff like that and it taught me things about loudspeakers that was amazing and with an electronics background i started understanding very quickly so then anything that was thrown to me in terms of books or tutorials which is not available at that time on the mm-hmm. internet mm-hmm. it was very easy to understand what they are talking about because i am into this mm-hmm. it's like i am doing my phd in making manufacturing loudspeakers so obviously if you tell me about uh, about how the working principles are of a new technology or something that somebody gave me in a brochure it 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 was coming to me very easily and i quickly understood that the maximum amount of lies told by any manufacturer is from is about loudspeakers because meaning there is no one single uh, industry that can say that this speaker is 300 watts it's like you can take something and say okay it weighs 2 kilos right, right. what is there that says that it will be 300 watts so one manufacturer can say mine is 1000 one guy can say it's 2000 who are you to challenge that then this came across to me at a very very early age so when i actually started sound.com in 1998 i had a 6 year period where i honed my skills right from tape manufacturing duplication being an assistant engineer in a recording studio so seeing that angle of the business then manufacturing loudspeakers doing a little live sound with in my dad's company to finally come and say now nah, i want to start sound.com my own way or the highway and that's how sound.com was formed to to be a rebel okay to do it my way and and i wouldn't say that i did anything to prove anybody wrong i i, I did it because i instinctively did it. and it happened everything came to me very normally then there was no such thing that you know there was a technology that i could not have been aware about because i was reading on a day to day basis i was learning i was evolving as i adapting and till this day there is not a single day in this warehouse there's something that we did not have to do hmm. it's not like a recording studio like it's another day in office okay let's make this case and let's change this let's put this caster or let's like you know paint this speaker this finish or it it's a never ending process it just goes on and on and on and on and and, and, and this constant evolution is the thing that drives me 
and I have seen a lot of rental companies owners they were they went by their names they never went by their company names mm-hmm. and I was very clear that this has to be sound.com and not Warren not Warren sound or me name or Christian my company after my son mm-hmm. or my grandchildren or whatever you know mm-hmm. obviously I have not come to that stage in my life and uh, and I knew that I wanted to also do all this before I grew. I wanted to be on top of the food chain in my middle age and not in my not in a time where I can't enjoy it. Okay. And I also wanted to live a balanced life, which a lot of people I've seen in this industry have not managed. Very few people have managed to be successful in this field as well as live a balanced life. I still see a lot of owners of their companies still go on their gigs, on practically most of their gigs. And I see a lot of owners don't go on their gigs also. I have not seen owners that can shift gears, where they can work in the trenches and then they can be next day in office. And So I have tried to keep that sanity where I can still you know, chase my passion and I also run it like a company. So how do you decide on which gig you want to go or you, you want to travel to a particular city? Is there some way you come to a decision? Or? You know, of lately it has become, I am going on the gigs if if one of my headline engineers, he is unwell, so I am replacing him. Okay. <laughs> Sometimes I am doing their tour because... Uh, so you have a team in place which... Yes. yes. And uh, you also train them yeah, training is training and mentoring is is the reason why a lot of people have been with me for a very long time because I mean this is this is something you cannot note just today. It's about reading every day. Every day for fifteen years. Or I can say that is since the time Sambarkam has formed, but it would be for the past nearly 20 years I have been reading every day about technology about life sound technology so it's very easy to understand why things become what they are and how things are the way they are because you can't play catch up you can't say in 3 years I can know everything you have to it's like, it's like, you know, absorbing, every day, absorbing, absorbing, learning and knowing that you will never learn everything right. will make you understand. moment it just gets to your head and you think you're a know-it-all, that's the time you stop learning, that's the time you're down here. So, in, in Life Sound, I, I don't think there's been a day I have not read. Besides reading, do you also travel abroad to attend concerts of big stars there? I have done it a lot in the period between 2002 and 2005. Just to and learn what how what they do? Not necessarily. It's just that now our roles are so different that I can't travel like how I used to. There were times I was 40 days in North America. Nay, I can't even think of 5 days now. Because <laughs> the company has grown and there are so many people we are responsible for. But I have attended notable concerts like you know Dave Matthews and Bruce Springsteen and Dixie Chicks and in so every what did, what did venue. You from there? What did you learn from your experiences abroad? I think that the learning was immense in terms of the technology and the way they did their logistics management. But I knew that there was a realistic aspect to the whole thing is that we could not own and invest in the kind of gear that they had. Because if you look at just one band, they can do a hundred city tour within a period of 365 days. And here we don't even have one artist who can do more than five shows like that in the year. Which is a sold out ticketed stadium. So there was a gross, uh, there was a ground reality to that. So what 
I did was that I have realized that if you want to have your Chinese restaurant, then you have to run your Chinese cart properly. Mm. So let's start doing the menial stuff properly. And I can say with pride that Samrakkam is one company that did every format of show properly, be it the smallest show to the biggest show. It was not about you know getting a gig because you wanted it on your CV and and you know do it at any price. So it was doing your everyday shows. It's about continually reinvesting your faith in your customer. Because then you will realize that you know you can reach a position which is very strong. You can have the bandwidth. You can grow in width and in depth. It's not about just investing in equipment. You're investing in people while you're equipped, while you're investing in equipment, and you're training them. So people ask me, you know, do you think that training is something that uh, you'd be like uh, wasting your time? They will eventually leave you. And we are a classic example. Last year when we had our internal awards function, there were seven people in our top tier engineering team that got awards for being decadians in some. Well, completed more than ten years, and Warren Bissouza has not been that success story. It is these people in key positions have been witness to this company's success and a part of this company's success. And I think that is the reason why we are where we are today because we do so many productions in a day, and it cannot be a one-man show. Meaning, I. I am quoted because I can say I am the company spokesperson, mm. but I may not necessarily be doing the job. Right. Like my parents just called me the other day and said, "You are doing film fair. You didn't even tell us." I said, "No, it's it's another day in office. We have to forget that the glam aspect of the job and look at it as an audio production. And the moment you do that, then you start understanding how you need to conduct yourself." It can be you can say you did this production or that production, but how well did you do it? The proficiency of the way the job was done, how you manage the logistics, how good it sounded, how did your staff represent you on the gig? Because if you want to know anything about a company, you can come to know exactly how the staff takes care of your customer. and a motivated guy will always you will see that he beams he will be very interested in ensuring the, the project is a big success and sound.com has been that one company where people have put themselves at second place and put the company first and i think that is our greatest success story people have worked for the brand value of sound.com and people may have worked for warren as a mentor but not as a boss hmm. they would have only and only work for the brand value of sound.com super so. thanks all for your time yeah. thank you for all these wonderful yeah. things we'll meet you again very soon sure sure sure